What if interest rates double? What does that actually mean? Well, every year since forever, it seems, there's been news headlines warning us about impending interest rate increases. Interest rates about to rise, prepare for interest rate shock, was one of my favorite, uh, local favorite headlines. Uh, that was a few years back. And what happened the very next day, the day after the local paper publishes, prepare for interest rate shock, uh, the Bank of Canada lowers prime by a quarter point. So kind of funny how that one works. So the main problem though, with all these headlines, aside from being radically wrong sometimes, or most times, is that in the story below the headline, there's very rarely, if ever, any kind of real math. So telling me rates are going to rise, it's kind of like saying I'm going to get stung. Okay, but stung by what? A mosquito? A Zika virus carrying mosquito? A bee? A hornet? A murder hornet? A scorpion? Like, help me out here. What's the actual damage going to be? What does it mean to me? Okay, well, here it is. Here's the missing math from my own inflammatory headline, right? What if interest rates double? First off, double the interest rate does not equal double the payment. Now, please note, I'm going to use a 25-year amortization to calculate these payments. That way it reflects the majority of first-time home buyers, people putting less than 20% down, and it reflects a lot of people already in a mortgage. So as of today, in July of 2021, Mortgage rate amortization balance. So a $100,000 mortgage balance at say a 2% five-year fixed rate over 25 years, the monthly payment per 100,000 is $423. Now at the end of the five-year balance, or at the end of the five-year term, pardon me, the balance is outstanding is $83,770. So if interest rates double, what does this actually mean? Will you take that same $100,000 initial balance? Well, no, no, you don't, right? Right there, that's where we think about this for a sec. It's five years later. The mortgage has been paid from 100,000 down to 83.7. If interest rates double, the new 4% market interest rate is actually gonna be applied on the renewed mortgage amount, which will be $83,770. So that's the first piece of the math that some people forget to account for. At 4%, we're going to use a 20-year amortization now because we're going to stay on track. Now, the option might be there in the future to re-extend that amortization back out, which would have the effect of bringing the payment down. So even in the face of double interest rates, the, the, the pain wouldn't be quite that extreme. But we're not going to look at any of those little maneuvers. We're just going to look at the straight math. It's five years later, your $100,000 mortgage, you paid four twenty three dollars a month on, it's down to eighty three seven. dollars you're renewing at 4%, you're keeping on track with a 20 year amortization. You're foolishly taking another five year fix. We'll come to that later. Your payment is now going from 423 to $506. It's going up by about 75, 80 bucks a month, $83 to be precise. Which by the way, the end of that five year term, the balance will have come all the way down to 68.5. So you're still paying it down pretty nicely at 4%. 4% is actually a, a pretty great rate in the grand scheme of things. But let's make these numbers a little more relatable. Let's apply them to the average Canadian household. So currently in Canada, the average new mortgage balance is $400,000. To qualify for a $400,000 mortgage requires not only down payment money, amazing credit, not good credit, not so-so credit, like great credit, amazing credit helps even more. And also, more than anything, it requires well-documented income. Specifically, it takes about an $80,000 gross annual income to qualify for this $400,000 mortgage, based on an exceedingly rigid stress test introduced back in 2018. The maximum mortgage payment of this household today is $1,700. $1,700 a month set against $6,700 a month of gross income. Of course, we don't live in a world of gross pay, so okay, a little more math. $80,000 is taxed at approximately 25%, leaving our borrower with $60,000 cash in hand, $5,000 a month cash in hand. That $1,700 payment gets pulled out of their little stockpile. They've got $3,300 per month left to cover groceries, insurance, life, gas, et cetera, other necessities. Essentially, just 25% of their pre-tax income is being used to service the mortgage. 
which is kind of interesting. I mean, it's a pretty significant cushion. And again, that relates to that stress test introduced by the federal government to protect you from yourself, despite there being no evidence at all to suggest that you needed such protection. The byproduct of this stress test has really been to push home ownership out of the reach of the lower half of the middle class, maybe the lower three quarters of the middle class, and effectively exacerbate the wealth gap and essentially widen it to the point where it's nearly impossible to jump or, or bridge with existing policies. But again, I digress. Back to the fate of our borrowers with their $400,000 mortgage facing doubling interest rates. So we need to ask a couple key questions here. Five years from now, what will their income be? They started the mortgage out at $80,000 gross. Okay, is it plausible they will receive a 1% raise each year? If so, then $84,000 is what they're left with five years later, which leaves them with 62.5 net after tax, about $200 per month, more money in hand. So what if rates double? Well, at renewal with just 20 years left on that mortgage, the new interest rate of 4% on the new balance pushes that payment to $2,025, a $325 a month increase. So they got a $200 a month raise, but the mortgage payment went up by 325. Oh no, they're short $125 a month. Keep in mind, they had a $3,300 per month cushion. So what does that really mean? You know, I'll digress slightly for a second. I'll tell you what it really means. All right, a doubling of interest rates means that the average Canadian household will go out for dinner to the keg one less time per month. That's about what that means, all right? Because ask yourself, is a family with an $84,000 household income truly going to have difficulty with a $2,025 per month mortgage payment? Of course not. I mean, again, the stress test actually pre-tested them at 4.79%, or if they were, took the mortgage more recently, they've been stress tested at 5.25%. They qualified as if rates were five and a quarter. So what, did, what are we even talking about here, right? Well, I mean, again, these headlines don't have the math. So here's the math. So odds are again that that same household is probably paying rent today, somewhere between 2,200 and 2,500 already. So they're doing okay making their rent payments. They gotta keep a roof over their head. Interest rates doubling, just not a thing. I think we can see that pretty clearly. So again, I mean, is it plausible that interest rates double, even probable? It is, sure. I could see interest rates being 4%, you know, four years from now, five years from now. That, that's, that's pretty easy to imagine. We, we were almost there just a few short years ago. So that's fine. But will there be blood in the streets if rates go up to 4% from the roughly 2% they're at? No, it's just not that big of a deal. Okay, well, what if they triple? Well, that's going to be a whole nother clip because this one's been too long already. So stay tuned and I'll do a whole nother, whole nother piece on what if interest rates triple and we can look at that math. And we'll keep going until we get to a point where, okay, actually, maybe there's a problem. But hint, hint, even at triple, I don't think we're going to see it. And yeah, again, this is all based on fixed rates, which I am not a fan of, but 80% of Canadians are. Fixed rate mortgages in particular five-year terms or worse still a seven or a 10-year, never take a seven or a 10-year mortgage, never do this. They do more financial damage on aggregate to Canadian households than just about any other needless expense because the expense of course is the prepayment penalty, which is triggered by two out of three families inside three years. That's the average. So the prepayment penalties are sorely misunderstood, not just by consumers, but by people who work at the financial institutions themselves. So look, life is variable. Maybe your mortgage should be too, because as you've just seen by the math, the average Canadian household can absolutely afford interest rates doubling. Well, never mind doubling. What if they went up a quarter point? What if they went up a half point? What if they went up three quarters of a point? These are really not going to be things that are gonna have any kind of material impact. So as I say, life is variable. Maybe your mortgage should be too. And the bottom line, contact your local mortgage broker for their expert opinion and get them to weigh in. If you're a little worried about when interest rates rising, if you're still worried, which you shouldn't be by now, uh, have a conversation with your broker. Thanks very much.